This time on Hook It and Cook It, we have a triple-tailed treat. Very, very good. That fish is delicious. It doesn't have a fishy taste. It's really fresh. It's got a lot of body to it. The fish is delicious. I'm not a big seafood person, and I love this. It's seasoned good. It tastes absolutely delicious. Hook it and cook it. From the catch to the kitchen, it's your front row seat to learn mouth-watering new ways to fix seafood. It's time for Hook It and Cook It. Welcome to Hook It and Cook It. I'm your host, Frank Willem. We're at Island View Casino with Chef David Crabtree is going to show us how to fix a fish you don't find on the plate too often, triple tail. Let's see what he has in store for us. Well, we've got a triple tail here, which is not a, a commercially targeted fish. You can see the three tails on the back of it. That's why they call it triple tail. Um, I had four seafood companies looking for them and only found me six. So the customers that are here tonight, eating them is a treat for them. Um, basically what we're going to do today is, is we filleted it already and we're going to saute it. You got Dip the plate. A little egg wash and a little flour. So the, um, the dish is a... Uh, it can be grilled, blackened, sauteed. Today we're gonna to saute it, and we've dipped it in a little egg wash, a little seasoned flour. So we're gonna get that started in the saute pan. Now if you couldn't find triple tail, what other fish would you recommend to try instead? Uh, trout will be good, just about anything. Uh, anything that you can saute. And basically what we're gonna do with this is uh, saute it a little bit, and then when we take it out, we're gonna add our ingredients for our Creole and we're going to build it in the same pan. Um, on the bottom of the plate when we get it served we'll, we'll make some corn relish and put that down then we'll be able to fish and the shrimp Creole on top of it. Um, what kind of oil is that? Anything special? It's a, just a vegetable oil. Okay. Um, triple tail is something that, that's kind of hard to catch for me anyway. Um, I've come across them one time when I was out in the Gulf fishing or hanging around a buoy. They kind of float on the top. And they look almost like trash floating in the water, little black things you're coming across them. Um, they're only down here for six months out of the year. Something like that, yeah. They, they tend to, to migrate this way when the water gets warm. Um, and the one time that I had an incident with them, I, I came up on one in my boat and I saw it from a distance. I don't have an electric motor. I had a, a big, bigger motor on the back of my boat and I cut it off and I kind of drifted up to them and I cast my live shrimp right out in front of them. The, fish went around to the back of the buoy. Wasn't even interested. <laughs> so I let my boat drift off and I cranked it back up and I went around to the front side of the buoy, got right in the spot and I cast it right in front of them, went around to the other side of the buoy. Ignored my bait. And that was live shrimp you said, That right? was live yeah. shrimp, so. Uh, the funny, I had the opposite uh, thing. We were fishing for trout and we were drifting past a rig like you talked about and using plastic bait, didn't even see the fish and he hammered it. And that's the only one I've ever caught. So I guess they're finicky. Um, typically the captain will take the fish home when they catch it and it, it never makes it to the, uh, the seafood market. Very seldom will you see it as a trip market. A lot of people consider it equivalent to a red snapper or something like that. It's, it's a species that's uh, unlike any other in the Gulf. Um, this is almost ready to come out of the pan. We're going to brown it a little bit more. Is there some trick to knowing how, because if you cook it too long, it gets dry. How, is there any trick to knowing when to stop? Mainly just uh, the color of the texture of it, how, how uh, hot you've got your pan. We want to be careful not to burn this because we want to build our uh, shrimp creole in the same pan. We will use the drippings from the, uh, the fish. Now, is this one of the dishes you won an award for? Because I know there's a pile of them. No, no, I've done something similar. Um, I've never entered triple tail in a, a competition because typically in a competition, you'll have to supply 150, 200 guest portions. <laughs> and I've never had, uh, never been able to get that much tri triple tail, get my hands on that much triple tail. You could just do real tiny portions, right? Well, you could. <laughs> Some chefs do that. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen that a few times, yeah. Chef Jackie. Cut it in half, cut it in half. All right, that's looking good, smelling good too. That's not awesome. Mm. 
You do want to be careful not to move it around in the pan too much. We're going to go ahead and put this over here. We're going to start our Creole. We're going to kind of cheat. We're going to, that piece is a little bit thicker, so we're going to let it sit in there a little bit. And we're going to start adding our uh, Creole, shrimp Creole items. When we come back, Chef David mixes up a delicious sauce to go with our fried triple tail. We're going to put a little bit of butter in here just for uh, mouthfeel, flavor. I think legally any, anything Cajun has, they have butter in it, right? <laughs> I'll take another plate. <laughs> That's how good it is. It's just delicious. It's different. It is delicious. Whatever they did, it's wonderful. I'm a picky eater. It's great. The sauce has a little hint of something sweet in it, which complements the fish so nicely. The fish alone is not fishy. It doesn't leave that aftertaste of fish in your mouth. This is the first time I've had triple tail, and it's probably one of the best fish I've ever had, and I love fish. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. We're at Island View Casino, where Chef David Crabtree is making a sauce for our triple tail. Let's see what he's up to. Okay, so I've taken the uh, triple tail out of the pan, and we've got our pan drippings there, and we're gonna start with our, our onions and bell peppers. Celery. You just want to kind of uh, render these down a little bit till they get, become translucent and get the flavors off the bottom of the pan. All right. The Creole sauce that I'm making here is a, uh, a roux thickened Creole sauce. Um, some people use just tomatoes and they'll cook them down until they get naturally thick. Some people will use a cornstarch to thicken it later on. I like to use a roux, a blonde roux, um, opposed to a dark roux, um, for a few different reasons. Uh, a, a blonde roux has less of a, uh, a roux flavor. It's mainly for thickening. A dark roux is something that you'd add to gumbo or an etouffee because you want that dark roux flavor in, in the dish. All right. And a little garlic. By waiting for the garlic, it doesn't get bitter that way, right? If you go right. too long, it tends to get bitter. True, true. And we want our tomatoes to uh, break down pretty good, so we're going to add them to it. This time of year, you can get some wonderful garden tomatoes. Um, That's about wife, what, a cup uh, or so? Up, two cups. Two, two cups, cups of tomatoes. My wife's been working over at P&J Farms, helping them a little bit, and she'll bring home these beautiful red tomatoes, and we'll make tomato sandwiches, tomato mayonnaise and toast. Mm. And they're organic, too. Organic, yes. Organic. All right. We're going to put a little bit of butter in here just for uh, mouthfeel, flavor. I think legally any, anything Cajun has, they have butter in it, right? <laughs> And then we're going to start building our, our seasonings in there. We've got uh, one tablespoon of thyme, a little bit of Cajun seasoning. Pauper domes or something like that? Or? I like pauper domes. They do a very good job at their seasonings. A lot of places will make it, and that's fine too. And a little bit of tomato paste. We're going to add the tomato paste to it for, for the color. And we want to add it now so it'll kind of caramelize and bring the sugars out in the, uh, the paste. A lot of chefs will add it to it once they put their stock in and they'll build on from there. Um, I find that adding it to it now kind of uh, sort of like making the Italian marinara sauce, I guess. You want the uh, tomatoes to kind of brown and the sugars to come out in them. I like your technique. I'd end up with that all over the stove if I tried that. Yeah, the That's first it. chef I worked with, Bill Brazell, um, he saw me cooking one day and I was trying to just toss it and it was going all over the place. So he called me in the next day and he gave me a pan and put some pennies in it. He said, do this for the next 10 minutes. Toss the pennies around. <laughs> I thought idea. he was joking, so I ignored him. <laughs> he came back five minutes later and I wasn't doing it. And, 
it went downhill from there. <laughs> How long do you usually cook pennies? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got a little bit of uh, our roux, which we're gonna hold off from putting in a few minutes. We'll get our shrimp stock in there. When we return, we'll finish up our sauce. The shrimp are almost cooked, so you want to get your roux back uh, to, a, to the point where it's uh, spreadable, mixable. <laughs> you can make up words, I did. Excellent. <laughs> this is delicious. It's a nice flaky white fish. This triple tail is excellent. It is very mild, white fish. It's just an excellent dish. I love it. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. We're making fried triple tail with a sauce that looks delicious in its own right. When you when you make your own shrimp or crab stock, you just take the, the, the shells and so forth and just reduce them and, and just boil well, them for a while? Well, not, not reduce, you want to simmer them. Um, if you're using shrimp shells, you want to put your uh, maripaw, your onion, celery, and carrots in there with it, your stock, your water, mm -hmm. and then you just want to simmer it for uh, maybe 45 minutes. If you're using fish bones, the same thing. You want to just simmer it, just, just lightly boil it. If you, if you boil it too much, it becomes bitter. And I, that was a tough lesson to learn too um, when making stocks. So we've got everything in there now. A little bit of Worcestershire, just for balance. And again, like Chef Jackie said, we like to use uh, Crystal hot sauce, Louisiana hot sauce. I love the uh, Tabasco plant over there. I love to go tour it. And certain items uh, you can use Tabasco for, but Tabasco's got a lot of heat, whereas nope, no Crystal in Louisiana has uh, some more flavor. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly just a personal preference. Um, we're gonna get our shrimp going in here, and then Chef Jackie's gonna start the, uh, the corn relish over there. And the corn relish is uh, basically something that we're going to use for the base of the plate. We're going to lay the shrimp on it, then the triple tails, the uh, shrimp creole will go on top of that. So I'm going to toss it over to Chef Jackie there. Okay, um, we have, um, you take uh, two ears of fresh corn. Uh, you take the fresh corn and you, um, you season it with a little bit of butter and salt and pepper. And, this, and then, this, this is the, the corn we use over at the uh, Beach Boulevard steamer. Beach steamer. It's fresh our, in a husk. Our general manager insists on fresh corn, so we get right. it in fresh and we shuck it. Mm -hmm. But we've shucked this and rubbed it down with seasonings and oil, and then we've roasted it in the oven for about 30 minutes to give it a, a good Carmelic, caramelized flavor. Flavor, mm -hmm. sweeter and flavor. And bring the sweetness out of it. So we have the corn after it's done. Cool it, chuck it. Okay, so we add the corn. Um, we have one cup of sauteed onions. Okay. Two tablespoons of cilantro. One teaspoon of honey. Uh, I have, uh, let me see, um, marmalade. One teaspoon of orange marmalade. That's kind of like the honey sort of thing to balance. Balance. Yeah, vinegar, vinegar and sweet, um, sweet and sour. That's why people like sweet and sour so much. Um, here's a teaspoon of green onions or scallions. Uh, let me see. We have lime juice, one teaspoon, and the zest. Half a teaspoon of that. And then we have um, one cup of diced tomatoes. And then we're just going to give that a toss toss. So other than the corn and the onions, pretty much everything, nothing else is cooked together. They just, the flavors meld. Right, it's like a things. salsa. Almost. Like a salsa. Right. Right. The, uh, the sauteed onion gives it a lot of flavor. We've done it before with just the raw onion and the flavor really doesn't come out there. You're looking for that sweetness, the sweetness of the roasted corn, the sweetness of the onion. And uh, we're gonna use that as the base for our, uh, our plate. The center of the plate. Mm -hmm. Bevel off the smear. No smear, just plop. <laughs> just plop. Okay. This, is, this is just a plop. And the only thing we need left to do on our, uh, our shrimp creole is to uh, thicken it now with the roux. The shrimp are almost cooked, so you want to get your roux back uh, to, a, to the point where it's uh, spreadable, mixable. <laughs> you can make up words, I did. <laughs> it's not very yolky though, for sure, right? <laughs> 
Yoki might stick around. So we're gonna add our roux to it and uh, give it a good mix. How long do you usually cook the shrimp so they don't get overcooked? It depends on the size of the shrimp. These shrimp cook real quick, four to five minutes. They're about half done now, so by the time the roux uh, settles and cooks in, it be, should be perfect. You don't like my spoon? Oh, uh, in case you want the juice. Oh. Trying to think right. ahead. Right, right, right. right. Stay tuned, it's just about taste time. Okay, David, well, she, <coughs> Jackie set the bar pretty high with the crab cakes. You got, you, you got some competition there. Let's give this a try and see how you did. Okay. We're at Island View Casino making fried triple tail. The sauce is almost complete, and then it's time for our triple tail treat. And there's different kinds of creoles. There's chicken creole, and shrimp creole, and anything that you can imagine you can use for the protein. Well, that sure looks good. Do you want me to look? This is good. About right? Good. Just about right. right. We've got our Creole almost ready. We've got our triple tail sauteed off. And like I said, you could, you could grill it or whatever you want with it. We're gonna kind of just lay that over the top. And how thick, you, you just keep cooking it until it gets the right well, thickness, you right? Cook, you want to cook the roux out. If you put the roux in there and you don't bring it to a simmer and boil it long enough, you're going to get a floury, uh -huh. pasty taste in your mouth. So you want to put the roux in there and give it a while to work, give it a while to blend, to give it a while to tighten, and then it uh, should be ready. A lot of chefs like to use a slurry of cornstarch and water for uh, thickening their, their, their Creoles. Uh, the only problem with that is if you decide that you want to use it the next day and you take it out of the refrigerator and go to reheat it, it's, it's going to be thinner and then you're going to have to thicken it again. Whereas a roux, um, it'll hold longer. So we're just going to give a little bit of this uh, shrimp Creole right over the top of it. I'll catch the edge of those plates there, mm -hmm. Chef. She was on do it anyway. It was bothering her, I could tell. <laughs> Ooh, boy, that was great. And there's a few other things you can do to the dish to finish it off. One thing that I like to do is a little uh, sweet potato straw, which is some really fine sweet potatoes and kind of gives it some height. So when it comes out of the kitchen, the people will look at it and go, wow. And that's what you're looking for in a presentation, the wow effect. And that pretty much uh, wraps up the, uh, the shrimp creole triple tail. Okay, David, well, she, <coughs> Jackie set the bar pretty high with the crab cakes. You got, you, you got some competition there. Let's give this a try and see how you did. Okay. Now this, the, oh man, it, it looks great. The texture is wonderful. Get a little salt on there. Mmm. Mmm. The fish is so mild, you know. It's, it it's is, deep. it is. It picks up flavor of the Creole, the corn relish. And I like to get some of that sweet potato in there for a little crunch. I think it came out very good. I don't know if it can beat the crab cakes. Crab cakes are one of those things that's hard to beat. Very good. You did good. You did good. I'll Thank say you. it's a tie. How about that? A tie? Well, that'll work, I guess. We'll take the tie. <laughs> Thanks. We learned how to make fried triple tail at Onan View Casino. And I'd like to thank Chef David Crabtree and Chef Jackie Seavey for their expertise. I sure hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can find the recipes on our Facebook or webpage. Join us next time for another delicious episode of Hook It and Cook It.